Interesting stove, it's about a 18 inch steel casing with a plate welded on the bottom, half a plate on the top of the hole for the uh, vent pipe, and then a hinged half, as you can see there. And then the air for the stove is on these two steel pipes here, look like they're about two, two and a half inch pipes, and uh, come down to the bottom, and then they have just a little pivoting uh, device on top to regulate the amount of air going in. It's interesting. And then steel down at the bottom there to hold it off the ground, but that looks like a pretty solid kind of a stone. portending of the rain that inevitably we'll be driving into if it doesn't come to us. What's interesting about this rainbow is that it highlights the fact that um, El Calafate is at a point geographically where it has lots of sunlight, but within 50 kilometers, as you can see right now, we're driving into bad weather that comes across from Chile through the past that created this glacier. And that's why on most days it's probably cloudy, rainy, and uh, either all or most of the time. how solid this one looks, but then the one over here is so much like Swiss cheese. I wonder why the difference. Here a third type of the dark and blue and the green also indicating the 
density at which the, that ice was compressed. It might have been part of one of the underground tunnels. After these people get through falling in the water, God, the risks people take. Well, okay, this is O'Nelly Bay. Its significance is all of the uh, cab chunks of ice. And then notice how the one on the right's a hanging glacier. Now notice that the glacier on the right, there's apparently four glaciers over there, probably hidden back in some of the valleys as well, from the right as well as the left. But also notice Back up in there is the source, and more of the source. These are probably the 10 to 12 per small fingernail size. This park is extremely protected. In other words, we can't go off the trail, we can't go past the point over there where you see some humans moving around because the soil is so fragile uh, they don't want anything damaged. There also are wild cows and bulls in this park that are a product of an earlier time that became feral and they are in fact left alone. Presumably they provide a service. I think what that service is is they eat lower branches. I'm not sure what the benefit of that is. But perhaps it is that they distribute the seeds everywhere and that promotes the growth of trees which fall over very easily here and die because of high winds and the thin soil in which the roots which go out horizontally cannot get a good grasp. I believe these glaciers are receding but curiously, uh, Puerto Marino, the one we saw the other day, is not receding, it's stable. So it, it uh, replaces what it loses each year. Here's some more interesting little flower gizmos. And those are probably about four or five times. Those are probably about four or five times as big as a pinhead, maybe six, seven times. We've seen this bush before. And 
these are little white berries. This ecology is what we've seen uh, in this scale and in whenever I'm in the mountains. It'll be this kind, at least down here in the Patagonia. Very much open, lots of deadfall. Maybe more deadfall here than elsewhere because the glaciers obviously stripped the soil clean. And it's taken this long for them to get, I think he said, 10 centimeters on average of soil. Off to my right, I can hear a stream. Nothing else. A plane, perhaps. Unless it's the roaring of a fall, that may be the case. Otherwise, it's that magnificent silence of a forest. called Old Man's Beard. see very little, if any, form of life other than plants, trees. Occasionally an insect flies by. You wonder if it's too cold. Just isn't a completely developed enough habitat. Pretty colored habitat. And this is another kind of a growth, I think. Can't bend down far enough to see it. Part of the decomposition process, I'm sure. flower. This one almost a pale uh, chalky white pink. This is the river that dumps out of Lago Nelly and empties into Lake or Lago Argentina. I'm using the zoom to get in close on those mountains that I might not get another shot of. You can see where the tremendous reserves of water and snow come from.
is a dirt road, I mean a paved road that we've been traveling on, dirt in the beginning, uh, for a little more than an hour alongside this lake, and we're still traveling alongside this lake.